How often do you experience mental fog, distraction, absence of motivation, forgetfulness, and even isolation? With the avalanche of information that we are exposed to every day, from news, social media, YouTube, video streaming platforms, shallow small talks, and even some stress caused by both personal challenges and global agenda, it's very easy to feel like you are not completely yourself. Most often, this feeling of distracted confusion comes from the lack of mental clarity. And in today's video, I'll share with you number one habit how to boost clear thinking, why we need it, and how to be consistent with it, together with some personal tips and tricks that might work for you as well. And without further suspense, let me name this habit. It's writing. Yes, it's simple as that. This powerful practice dates back to the Sumerian civilization and is over 5,000 years old. Writing is the most magnificent man-made bridge that secured memory of the humankind and created community on a global scale. But today we will view writing as a unique personal everyday tool for living with attention, intention, and courage too. In one of the world's most impactful and touching diaries, Anne Frank wrote, I can shake off everything as I write, my sorrows disappear, my courage is reborn. It is just impossible to put it in a better way. Writing as a personal practice can take different forms, from diaries to uh, field notes. And earlier on this channel, I've made a video about Commonplace book. And uh, on an interesting note, I even I remember it so clearly because I feel I filmed it wearing the same blouse as I'm wearing today. It's just pure coincidence. And but but back then it was of a different color. So further on in this video, I will share with you how my writing practice has changed since then. living in the era of sharing and connecting with other people and that's why for some it can feel like a pure waste of time to write just for yourself and to yourself but it's such a wonderful way to release emotional stress and to put down some of the things that just cannot be shared with anyone and we all have such things inside Back in the early 2000s, when I just graduated from the university and had my first jobs with unlimited access to the internet, and back then internet was uh, wild west on the one hand, but on the other it was quite a naive and gentle space, at least from my own experience. So I got to spend a lot of time there and I found one very interesting and sort of life-changing website. On that website people shared their deepest secrets and there was nothing atrocious, nothing creepy or violent there. People just wrote about their emotions, losses and regrets and I remember how I spent hours reading all those secrets and how emotional they made me. I was crying a lot out of just pure sympathy with people. That's when I have decided to introduce some sort of a journal type of practice for myself in order to document some emotions and events that I wanted to remember. And um, to tell you the truth, to some of those writings I have never come back. I never reread them because they, they were too hard and too painful to live through once again, but I felt so much relief when I was writing all those things down, and I still think it's, it's the best way to give yourself therapy if you don't have access to a professional one. 
a diary, a journal, a notebook will never judge you and you can always trust it and you can always trust yourself who is writing in there. James Pennebecker, a social psychologist at the University of Texas at Austin, studied the impact of her so-called expressive writing on mental health in 1986. Pennebaker developed research supporting the idea that secrets contribute to physical illness. Specifically, he discovered that people who experienced trauma and kept it secret were most likely to have health problems. This discovery led Penny Baker to launch his very famous studies using expressive writing. Diary type of writing helps structure your thoughts, focus, analyze, and reflect on certain experiences and events, and thus connect to yourself better and get a fuller and bigger picture of your own life. This process does not only force you to slow down, but it also triggers the subconscious processing of everything that you live through. If you, like me, are a very introverted person, then probably you are already writing, and if not, it's high time you start this practice. Introverts need to write more. It is so important for their self-expression, mental health, and the feeling of fulfillment. Very often, speaking out loud, introverts can have problems with finding words, which can lead to misunderstanding, false impressions, and I don't know, some other things. For example, I always write down thoroughly all the scripts <laughs> to my videos on YouTube. That's why first, my friends, I speak to you in the words that are written, and then only then I use my own voice. And it's not only because English is not my mother tongue, <laughs> I know it pretty well, but I still struggle with it sometimes and get tired of it, if to be honest. But also, I write so much better than I speak. Dr. Marty Olson Laney, in her book The Introvert Advantage, writes that our brains use many different areas for speaking and writing. Information needs to flow between the separate areas, and as introverts, we process information deeply which means it flows slowly. And thus, putting it down in written or typed words is so essential for many of us. And now, before we move on to some practical tips on writing more regularly and creating your own writing routine, I want to share with you some very curious prompt from a recently watched class about writing essays from your own memory. Ashley C. Ford invites to come up with an essay inspired by a popular song from the year you turned 13. It's such a cool and unconventional way to go down the memory Lane. This class is part of the learning path Creative Essay Writing, Explore the Personal and Powerful on Skillshare. This collection helps find your story, your unique voice, and your interest in the outside world using the guidance from acclaimed writers. Learning paths are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in specific order. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced, and a variety of categories including design, crafting, cooking, creative freelancing tools and software, marketing, etc. By the way, if you don't know already, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, craft, and more. If you're interested in exploring something new, check out the description section. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this part of the video. It 
it is important to understand that writing can be hard. You can even feel hurt or too emotional when writing, but it's only because of the transformative power of this practice. Writing can be done in, again, in various forms. I mean, like <laughs> physically, because you can write it down in your notebooks or uh, journals, and you can use some electronic devices. I write in physical notebooks and also on my laptop. I type a lot. I love typing, just as I love handwriting. But honestly, I rarely use my phone and special apps here for note-taking, because honestly, for me, it's just, it feels like regular texting, which is not special at all, and I don't feel anything while making notes on the phone. So, but it can be different for everyone. For many people, writing in a physical notebook is easier because thus they can gain the therapeutic effect of writing much faster. I've come across the following tip somewhere on the internet and I think it is so on point. When you feel too overwhelmed and stressed and you have no idea how to deal with certain problems of yours, try to write them down, all of them, and then read them, imagining that it's your friend or your parent or your child having these problems. And most probably, you will immediately see the best solution. This practice has helped me a lot. When you find it difficult to begin and be consistent, just start with free writing for just 10 minutes, for example. Living within the limits of your attention is such a great intention to have, and when you write, your attention is right here in your fingertips. The next tip is for people with perfectionist tendencies, and I do have them, that's why I know how it feels. Don't be afraid to spoil a beautiful notebook with your unworthy writing. Here is an example. I've been afraid to write in this notebook for months, and I think even years, because this was one of the gifts that Brian gave me when we reunited more than or two years ago, I don't even remember anymore. So I thought it was the most beautiful notebook in the world, and I thought that my crooked writing and my uneven th thoughts are just not good for writing them down here. For some reason, I thought that I would be disrespectful <laughs> to this notebook, and if you have any experience like this, please let me know so that I don't feel alone <laughs> in this. But I started writing in here, and now it's a notebook that turned into a collection of my field notes. It has just an array of things. Some things are kind of silly, some things are great to remember, so just don't be afraid to write in beautiful notebooks. When you start, you see that nothing bad happens and that your love of the form translate into the love of writing and contemplating. I don't get crazy with my notebooks, but my writing practice has changed, and now I love having multiple notebooks for multiple tasks or for various um, moods <laughs> that I'm in. As I already said, I have this tiny one for some field notes and occasional thoughts. It's always with me. I also have a very special notebook for writing down um, some texts, uh, quotes, or I don't know, poems that I want to remember and I want to contemplate on. And this is the way that I study some philosophical and spiritual texts as well. I have my commonplace book from the last year and I also have my dream journal. Having all these books doesn't feel overwhelming. Just on the contrary, I feel like I have more space for my writing. And to wrap up this chat, 
Here is a very important tip how to write in a meaningful way. Consume quality content. Practice slow reading, absorbing knowledge and inviting some deep thinking within. It's never too late to explore yourself more and get more clarity about where and who and what you are in this world. And you, when will you begin that long journey into yourself? Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Thank you so much for your time and attention, dear friends. And huge thanks to everyone who supports me on different tipping platforms and on Patreon, where I post more personal videos every week. Thanks to your support, I can create these videos that are available to everyone. Thank you once again. And for now, as always, be safe and keep your heart open. And I will see you soon. Пока-пока.